Are you ready? I can see nobody raising <laughs> objection. Okay. Ready? Okay. Oh. Ah, okay. Okay. Put it on your best mind. No? Yeah, you can. So ladies, huh? ladies and gentlemen. So ladies, huh? ladies and gentlemen. This is a statement by Azimio La Moja One Kenya. July 4th, 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, you are here because the people are fed up. We all know there comes a time when people get tired of being taken for granted. There comes a time when people get tired being taken for fools. There comes a time when people get tired of getting tired and decide to act, that time has come. Consequently, we are embarking on some drastic actions against the Ruto illegitimate regime because of Ruto's own actions against us. Ruto is imposing taxes on us without our consent and making laws whose net effect is to make life increasingly difficult for our people. We are here because the taxation situation in the country and its accompanying injustices can no longer be tolerated. Ruto has even removed subsidies on fuel, UNGA, electricity, and even school fees while giving subsidies to helicopter owners and using our money to finance lavish lifestyles of his allies. It has become clear that we are dealing with a dictator who also has no respect for one inch. Ruto has become a heartless tyrant. We are determined to get this situation corrected. Therefore, we are here to announce that our Kamkunji meeting is on in Nairobi this Friday, as we had announced. But it is not just a Kamkunji in Nairobi, but a Kamkunji across the country where this third liberation will be launched. On that day, 7th July 2023, that this coming Friday, among other activities, we will launch a signature collection to signify our rejection of a Kenya Kwanza legitimate regime and its policies, especially the punitive taxes. As we speak, fuel, food, fare are all going up in prices. In fact, fare is already going up by 30%. Fellow Kenyans, as a people, we are not given to suffering in silence. We don't, we don't kneel before dictators and beg for their mercy. Even the few who do still suffer humiliation and even death. So we fight. <coughs> we express ourselves loudly and clearly on issues affecting us. So we have got to fight and that fight begins on this Friday. We need unity now more than ever. United, we can get many of the things that we not only desire, but which we justly deserve. From Friday, 
let's proceed with bold determination that we are going to stick together. We are going to work together. Let us stay with this fight until the end. We abhor violence. By embarking on pickets, protests, tax boycotts, and civil disobedience, we are not, not in any way advocating violence. We have never advocated violence in the past. We will never advocate it now or in the future. We believe in the law and the rule of law and will act within the law. But only weapon that we have in our hands is our sovereign power to picket, to protest, boycott, and embark on civil disobedience. And we begin this on Friday, July the 7th. And fellow Kenyans, we want you to know that we are right, we are not wrong. By resorting to civil disobedience and protests, we can't be wrong unless the law itself is wrong. The same law that sets up governments and its institutions like parliament, the courts, the police, etc., allows us to picket, to protest, and engage in boycotts and present petitions. We are not wrong. We are acting within the law and we expect nobody to frighten us. We must never be made to believe that we are wrong when we protest. And Martin Luther said, and I quote, that is Martin Luther Jr. He told us, now it means sacrificing. Yes, it means sacrificing at points. We are acting, but there are some things that we've got to learn to sacrifice for. And we've got to come to the point that we are determined not to accept a lot of things that we have been accepting in the past, unquote. As a country, we are at that point. We invite all our people to prepare to join the Kamkunji in Nairobi and in different other places across the country on Friday. I want to repeat that it's not just in Nairobi. It will be in other centers across the country. And the names are going to be announced shortly. Thank you, Kenyans. This is a meeting in Kamkunji and other parts of the country for the Sabasaba of our lifetime. Thank you. End of statement. We should take a few questions. Yeah. If there's not, okay. Related to the statement, please. To the statement. He has already locked me out. Yes. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, my name is Sydney Chazima from NTV. Um, my statement is, uh, my question is locked to, we've had a meeting with the Kenya Kwanza side of the bipartisan talks, and they are saying that um, since uh, the talks are seemingly ceasing and there's no legal uh, conundrum around what the uh, selection panel was doing, they're saying that it should go ahead and appoint, the, uh, select the commissioners for the IEBC. What is your take on that? We already made a statement about that. As you know that IBC is a national institution which is supposed to preside over elections. And these are not uh, Kenya Kwanzaa elections. They're national elections, they are competition. So Kenya Kwanzaa cannot solely in the alone, single handedly, appoint the referee in the elections. That is very unfair. Those then will be their own elections. They are not going to be Kenyan national elections. If you say that Azimio must be party, part and parcel of appointing the electoral commissioners. So that must be decided jointly. They are the ones who actually scatter the talks. They even refuse 
to stop that task force from proceeding ahead. The task force has said that they never stopped. They have never been uh, told to stop at all. So they basically were just playing a game with us. And we were telling them those will not be in national, Kenya national elections. And we hope that we will not reach that stage. Last question. My name is Emmanuel Top from KTN News. Uh, just one question. Yesterday the courts uh, stopped the CS positions and declared them unconstitutional, null and void. Uh, do you think our courts are now going in the right direction? And what's your, re your reaction to that? Generally, we've said that, you know, the, uh, uh, general, the, the courts, you cannot talk generally, you cannot generalize. Because, you know, you've got magistrates' courts, you've got the high court, the court of appeal, the Supreme Court. So we, we deal with the issues which are specific. We don't want to generalize. But we think that the court has acted correctly in doing what is right. The, the media must get it correct. Because you're saying the, the court has done root to a blow. No, the court has just held, with, uh, uh, upheld the, the law, what the Constitution says. They have to interpret it correctly. And this is what we talk about, the, uh, uh, the division of, of, of powers and responsibilities. Parliament makes laws. If the executive implements those laws. And if there's a dispute, then the court interprets those laws in terms of the Constitution. That is the responsibility. So they have done their, their work properly, in our view.